it, it just seems that by the general public that they don't really understand is the T6.1 still actually being manufactured today? What is the future then? We realised as part of the crash test process that even the factory belts weren't really up to the standard. Hello, you join me at the Royal Cornwall Show. I have made my way past the St. Oswald Brewery stand and the Healy's cider stand. If you've ever been to Cornwall, you need to try the Rattler. Walk past numerous pasties and cream teas and I've found my way to the stand of Tamar Caravan Centre, who today they've been joined by Shane from Bespoke Campervans, the campervans I'm sure you would have seen on my channel before. So welcome, Shane, Tim. Or actually, you should be welcoming me because we're in one of your amazing <laughs> camper vans. So how's the show been for you? It's been really good, actually. It's um, the weather makes it, obviously, but uh, we've had lots of footfall and lots of interest in in all the products that we that, that we sell. But but mainly, I would say that the, the main interest has been with the with the VW. So it's uh, it's been really good. Good. And well, you said that the main interest and I think a lot of people in Plymouth would really know you just for your caravans and your motorhomes and the VWs are just a new thing but they're not the other you've actually done them for quite a while yeah so we've 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 um, sold VWs for a couple of years now really and that's mainly born from the interest that I have in the in the vehicles and obviously I drive one myself so um, yeah it's it's been something that we've wanted to develop as we as we grow really what's kind of prevented you from developing that because you I've noticed over the years you've had a few in and They've all been from different brands of manufacturers and... Yeah, I guess um, when we first started uh, looking at the conversion market, there's such a wide variety of, of different um, products that you can put in them, but also the standard of, of, of work. Um, but mainly because um, the industry is completely unregulated, really. So from my perspective, I wanted a, a product that we could sell and make sure that it meets all the current regulations. And that really brings us on to Bespoke. So presumably of all the hundreds of camper van manufacturers which you would have come across, you've actually chosen Bespoke. So why Bespoke? What's special about Bespoke? Especially because they're actually over in Northern Ireland. So it's not as if you can just, just pop down the road to see them. So, so why? Why Bespoke? Uh, again, talking about, you know, approvals and bits and pieces, there's not actually that many companies that are VW approved. Um, uh, but Bespoke are, are one of them and the one of the main things is it, it meets type approval and therefore can be classified as a, as a motorhome on the V5 document. Okay. Um, that also means that um, Bespoke camper vans are NCC approved which is the National Caravan Council. So again from our perspective it meets the standards that it needs to to get through our workshops and, and, and ultimately mean that customers are safe when they're using it. So bespoke then, where did it come from? Why did it start? <laughs> Probably also from a passion from the Volkswagen brand, sort of something from an early age that I've been into and played golfs and all sorts through the years and, and eventually that moved to transporters. And we actually started initially with a T4 and my own van was a T4, which I built myself. And we sort of built it up over many years. We had a background in sort of vehicle manufacture as well. And that's we knew that's where the, the goal was to go that way. Um, and we sort of worked towards trying to do the thing properly. There was a lot of a lot of people out there who were doing sort of, you know, run of the mill conversions or even really good conversions. And and in the early days, we were the same. We had to find our way. But we started to realise we wanted to really create a business out of this. That we had to start to look at, you know, being properly approved, doing the thing right, making all the proper approvals, and we aim to do that. Yeah. So Tim. As just touched on that there about the whole vehicle type approval. I mean, what actually does that mean? I mean, I've done a few videos now on this and I've spoken about it, and it just seems that by the general public that they don't really understand and they don't they don't care. Uh, what what does it mean? Why why is it a special thing to have? It's it, it's it, you're dead right. It's a special thing to have and it's something that's quite rare to hold. Um, it, it's not easy to get. Um, it's really a requirement whenever we first started to deal with Volkswagen directly and wanted to build, you know, new unregistered chassis. They had a requirement for us to have as a company to have type approval. In the early days, I thought, oh, that's going to be really hard to do. And it was. It took us several years. Um, we had to go through different crash test processes and all sorts of stuff, really, to, to, get, to get to that point. Um, the, the whole vehicle type approval is, is almost... A, it's slightly different now, but it originally was a European approval. So having the 
it's the highest level of approval available and it's what you technically would have on any brand new car so that allows that vehicle to be sold in theory throughout europe and it's approved in all the different countries of the of the eu there's some slight changes since brexit but that's still the basis behind it but it, it therefore then needs to meet all the different things and part of that is um us as a company we're audited by the vca so we then have what's called conformity of production so that's us basically guaranteeing that every single vehicle is built in exactly the same way and that, that's then audited through so that gives us a repeatable reliable product yeah. and, and that, that's part of that thing so and the actual conversion itself i mean to be quite honest with you, i don't really want to talk about the conversion an awful lot today because uh I have been fortunate to be invited over to the manufacturing plant. I will be going over sometime to have a look at it. So I'm not going to touch too much on that today. But the base van itself, it, it isn't just a normal panel van, is it? It's much more than that. There's, there's certain things that has to be done. Yeah, so from our point of view, we, we order this van specifically from Volkswagen for the outcome of these vehicles to become a camper van. So it's not just a, a random sort of panel van bought off anybody it's bought specifically for our needs so things like the swivel seats are always genuine factory Volkswagen seats exactly the same ones you get on the Volkswagen California and um, we also spec them with the secondary battery similar to what you would get on the VW product um, and then as part of our own crash test and then part of our approval we've actually made several enhancements sort of some some of the stuff around like seat belts and stuff so for example on a commercial vehicle the seat belt anchorages are a bit different to what they would be on, you know, like a, a passenger car in vehicle, like a Caravelle or a, or a California and Volkswagen's face on another vehicle. So um, we realized as part of the crash test process that even the factory belts weren't really up to the standard. And these are things that we've improved over time. That is incredible. So a lot of these panel vans which are out there at the moment, they probably not have that strength in it's, it's very unlikely and to be fair the people doing it probably wouldn't realize that it's only through the process of testing the vehicles and testing the vehicles with our conversion completed so you know whenever we mount a seat or drill a hole or drill a hole that's close to a seat belt that's in theory weakening the process so you've no way of knowing for sure what will happen without doing the necessary testing so in all honesty a lot of the vans may well be fine but how do you know yes and that's really the point behind and it. that's the whole vehicle that's type the of whole point and that's that's obviously what we're talking about isn't it yeah. yeah and also actually looking around the van there's various different california parts what what makes you want to put some california parts on your own conversion well volkswagen do a good job so why not you know we yeah. we, we look at that we've, we've i wouldn't say we've copied like for like exactly what they do but the way they vent like for example the heating systems vent it into the vehicle we do something very similar it's actually it's not exactly the same as the california because it's the other way around but we use very similar parts and we actually developed something with whale who do the heating system for us where they also did testing on us using them parts so we use a whale gas fired central heating system um but that's piped in through some of the california parts yeah. which wouldn't be how it was done in the california so again we had that independently tested by them guys to make sure that's safe and everything was working and for example the unit wouldn't go on fire or something like that so so we have had we've went through them processes as well humbly it's just it is it's pretty fascinating just you know what actually goes into a conversion such as this yeah we we, we were blown away to be fair when we when we visited the have you watched my video um, blown away that's one of the words i kept saying. oh is it <laughs> no they're genuinely blown away the amount of detail that Shane and the t his team have put into to, to making this the best product that they can that meets all the you know the, the current regs. Um, we were just blown away by the detail yeah. behind it. But is there a negative? And let's stop before you actually answer that. In the fact that the T six point one. I mean, what is happening with the T six point one? Is the T six point one still actually being manufactured today? So, so I can answer that. It, it, it's no longer available to order, um, although that's a situation that may change, but it, it's definitely still in current manufacture. We have, we buy them directly from VW and I know when the build dates are and several of them are way in the future yet. Um, Volkswagen have probably unofficially told us that we will have allocation of vehicles still for next year. So 2024, we should still see 6.1, certainly from our point of view. Um, it's different about how it's working through the dealer network. So the 6.1, because it can't be ordered, I believe they're going to build like a stock of vehicles and then 
they can be cheap, they can be picked from the dealer stock. But uh, but it's still looking positive for at least another year. So presumably that you being VW approved, that's actually going to be a benefit for you because you will still be able to do the conversions, whereas some of the other camper vans who just buy from the local dealer, they're not going to be able to. Yeah, well, I suppose that's the case. Okay, the the, the dealer stock will certainly be limited. So anybody that's buying by the traditional dealer network in that style, uh, I would say supplies definitely going to start to weaken yeah. on that. So it is. So. And there will there will be some you know dealers that are, are perhaps holding back some stock, um, you know, so that if you're buying through that route, you're not going to necessarily get yeah. directly to the factory, are you? So, so what is the future then? What the T6.1, whether it's next year or a little bit later, there is obviously it's going to come to an end. So, yeah. what is the future? What's what's going to happen? Well, it's a bit of an unknown. Obviously, the 6.1 will move to a new version of the Transporter Volkswagen route appears to be the electric route. So that's obviously gone ID Buzz. That's something we are working. We've some development ID buzzes in at the minute, and we're we're looking at that. Is that a uh, viable option? Do you think? Um, it should be a viable option. I think Volkswagen are pinning their own hopes on their new California being based on an ID bus. So based on that, there, there must be some way we yeah. can make it work. Um, weight, range, price, these are all issues and there's things we're working through. Um, I'm not totally confident it'll be maybe a mass production thing like it is on the transporter, but it, it's certainly there and we have to look towards the future and have to look towards electric. Um, New, the new van, which we're not sure what it'll be called, possibly the T7, that's now going down the route of the partnership between Ford and Volkswagen. So obviously we're taking a keen interest in that as well. And that's realistically where we feel our mass production will roll into. Yeah, because I find it strange that it, it, it's this joint partnership and Ford have they've announced theirs and their van, you can actually order it, I yeah. believe now. But VW haven't. So... What is going to happen is the Ford Transit going to come out, they're going to have deliveries, but yet still VW, presume that's probably because they've still got some remaining stock to sell. Yeah, that that appears to be the case. I suppose, I believe on the new van, Ford are taking the lead, so it's predominantly manufactured by Ford. That's, that's going to upset a few people. Some of the uh, Volkswagen fanboys, I'm sure they're not going to be too happy with that. Yeah, so so that, that, that appears to be the case that then Ford are ahead on that for whatever reason. And obviously Volkswagen are still saying we'll have stock during. I think their their own California is due to definitely run. They're still available to order, and they will definitely run up until the end of next year. So, so that seems to be where we're going with that. So before we get to next year, Tim, you know, as far as people locally are concerned, can they still buy vans? Are you going to have? I mean, you've obviously got quite a few of the show here today. Yeah. Are you going to have any more coming through the pipeline? Yeah, we we were quite quick to um, to get in and and place some orders so um as long as shane can build them we you know they'll still be coming so yeah they'll still be stock good That's on good that we have we have a good allocation for the remainder of the year and our our, our dealer partners all all have oh, really? put their name up for vans and we we've no reason to suggest it not be there and will not be stock available and actually a good range of stock right through automatics are now available again they've been they've been a bit slow for a while but the the production is starting to ramp up again and we're starting to see vehicles flowing through quite well so we should see really good production certainly during ah, fantastic. This year. Yeah. bailey screen bailey no. screen's going to be no. a struggle i think <laughs> no <laughs> never mind maybe ascot gray maybe i'll have to choose ascot gray yeah that's a, that's a corking color to be fair um are you going to buy one steve well to be honest with you, I, I did mention in, in one of my recent videos when I actually took out one of your hire vans that if I had the money, I would buy one. And I did actually get quite a bit of stick because effectively, if you had the money, you might buy a lot of things. You might buy a Ferrari or a Porsche or whatever. But what I was meaning was if I had the money, same answer really, I yes, I would buy one. Meaning I'm trying to find the money and yes, I do want to buy one. And if I did, I've already got about 20 videos lined up. <laughs> Even the unveiling of it, and talking about the specification of it. So I've got 20 videos planned out. So am I going to buy one? Certainly hope shall, so. Shall I get an order form now? Yeah. <laughs> Bailey's green. <laughs> or do you a special paint ourselves? <laughs> but something which I really do want, and I know, Shane, that you actually have, is you've actually got a TSI t6 haven't you which isn't standard is that right that's right <laughs> so, uh, t6 
TSA T6s are quite a rare thing. Um, we were hopeful, and actually for a period of time, we really thought the petrol route would be the way that things went, but that didn't work out. But I, I, I do personally have one, so it was one of the very first ones available. I ordered it the day they became available back then, uh, and I still have it to this day. So it, it's a bit of a special. I've done bits on it myself, painted it myself. It's very much my own van, um, and it's probably a, it's way over 300 horsepower anyway. So it, wow, it, it's a good going thing so it is for a van. 300 horsepower in a van yeah. that is definitely something i want to see <laughs> when i come over i'm gonna to have to come and see yeah. that i'll get your run of that <laughs> it never takes it out <laughs> don't blame you so i bet it's pretty brisk and quite sharp off the line and but just the handling just it's still a van at the end of the day isn't it yeah it is although we've some suspension upgrades and stuff done to that too so yeah it's uh, it's good for a camper i definitely look forward to seeing that yeah. <laughs> so, speaking as briskness off the line, I had better go. I know these guys have been here a long, long day. It's been a busy show for them, and I better leave you to it. But if you haven't seen the videos on what I'm talking about with these bespoke camper vans, you can see those in this video here. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I hope to see you soon.